Hey guys, welcome back to Sports Hack TV. Habib Namagamedov, as many know, was the most dominant fighter in the UFC up until his retirement, and no one had come close to beating him, both inside the octagon or in training apart from one man. So stick around to find out more about him guys. The fighters who trained with Habib know just how good he is and each have their own story to tell. The most common thing I get to hear about him is that he feels like a heavyweight while sparring and has immense grip strength to tie up his opponent's arms, giving him the advantage in the clinch. Others say that his technique is better than the rest, along with his relentless pace and pressure. And the rest claim it's not his brute strength which makes him so scary, but his sheer willpower to take you down and keep you there. I believe Habib is at the level he is because of all these key factors, but the key point people forget to talk about is his wrestling IQ. That's right folks, Habib's a genius and I'll explain why. When it comes to wrestling and jiu-jitsu, there are multiple submission holds and body positions which one needs to learn to get the edge over his competition. To put it plainly, it's like a game of chess. If a wrestler wants to take a guy down from a standing position, there are multiple approaches for him to implement that game plan and similarly, there are multiple ways to defend against a takedown as well. I say Habib's a genius when it comes to wrestling is mainly due to the fact that he's always two or three steps ahead of his opponents. What I mean by that is he can predict what his opponent's next move is going to be even before they've considered trying it and has the necessary defense in place to counter that. That's the main reason why these lightweights and even some heavyweights for that matter who are far bigger and stronger than Habib can't get up when they get taken down by him. It's that feeling that you're drowning which zaps all the energy out of you while trying to get up. Habib dominated all his fights but the hardest fight I feel was against Gleason Tiba early in his UFC career. The only other scary moment in Habib's career was when Dustin Poirier got him in a guillotine choke during their fight. I mean the choke was deep but Habib got out of it. His coach Javier Mendez did mention post that fight that he wasn't worried about it since Habib was stuck in a similar position during training and he had no issues in breaking free. He also said in a recent interview and I quote, "Habib's never come close to being choked. One time I saw one of my fighters, Kyle Kreshma, who's an Oklahoma State wrestler. He had him in a choke that I thought, "Oh my god, he's done." I can't believe I'm going to finally see Habib tap. I think it was an arm choke. He had it in so tight. I go like, "He's done, he's done." No, no. He got out and I go, "Habib, I thought he had you." He said, "No coach, I don't ever tap." When does later asked Habib if anyone has come close to making him tap during training and Luke Rockhold was the only name which came up. It just goes to show that even a light heavyweight couldn't get Habib to tap, which is just insane to me. Just to remind everyone, Luke Rockhold beat Chris Weidman, who was a two-time All-American in wrestling and dominated him on the ground as well. That's the level Habib is at, and I doubt we'll see another fighter like him anytime soon. Well, unless he decides to come back. He's arguably one of the most humble guys outside the cage and a true phenom inside one. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. If you liked the video so far, then hit the like button below and a sub would be amazing as well. Bye-bye, guys, and as always, take care.